So major podcast guest news and a few bits of news in my, inform- uh, my opinion on the latest happenings in WWE on this video. Firstly, I would say I really recommend the new uh, edition of the RWR podcast. This podcast is hosted by the Jim Connect Experience co-host Alice Radley and every week she has a guest co-host. This week it is Lance Storm. He has some great opinions uh, and in-depth knowledge about this week's edition of WWE Raw. It's a really good listen. Uh, check out just search for RWR Podcast on iTunes. They've also got, I think it's RWRPodcast.com. Check it out. It's a really, really good edition. I would also recommend last week's edition. I think it's Lamar. I think the gentleman's name is the co-host. It. It's a long three-hour podcast last week, but it's a really, really hilarious uh, edition of the RWR podcast. Again, check out RWR podcast on iTunes. Set Google, uh, Bing at whatever search engine you use. It's a really good weekly uh, podcast that Alice Radley has said, alongside a weekly co-host guest reviews that uh, week's edition of Monday Night Raw. It's a really good one. Now, talking about podcast guests, uh, I'll put the link up on this video to my old video, which uh, uh, which is podcast, wrestling podcasts that I listen to. There you can find uh, a list of some of the podcasts that I listen to uh, during the week, uh, which is one bonus, of, I suppose, being unemployed. You have plenty of time to listen to all these podcasts. Uh, and today, on Wednesday, r- is released episode number one of the two episodes released during the week of Talk is Jericho. Today, Chris Jericho hosts his podcast with his guest, uh, with his guest Nicole Polizzi, a.k.a. Snooky from the reality series Jersey Shore. I have to admit, I don't watch that type of reality show. I do, of course, know who she is from her appearance at WrestleMania all across the media. Uh, she's a really interesting guest. Good interview today on Talk with Jericho. But the big news is that this coming Friday, Chris Jericho's guest on Talk is Jericho is recently released WWE superstar Drew McIntyre. Yes, Drew McIntyre will uh, break his silence, talk about his time in WWE. I'm sure he'll talk about his release, perhaps his career leading up to WWE. We don't know. It was confirmed earlier on. This is, this is official news. It was confirmed by Chris Jericho earlier on on Twitter. And if you listen to Talk Is Jericho, today's podcast with Alex Snooky Polizzi, you listen right to the end, you will hear Chris Jericho announce it on the podcast himself. So Drew McIntyre will be on Talk Is Jericho this coming Friday. Again, that uh, podcast one, podcast one.com or on iTunes for free. Uh, so you can ch- click on the link uh, that's up on this video. All the podcasts that I recommend are, uh, listening to are absolutely for free. Another one of the ones I recommend is the Ross Report that's hosted by Jim Ross, former WWE, WCW, NWA announcer, commentator. He's a, I've always had much respect, well nothing but respect for Jim Ross. Uh, and he has released on his website a list of forthcoming guests for the Ross Report. And quite a great list. If you're a wrestling fan, if you're around about 30 years of age as I am, you will, I think you'll certainly enjoy, uh, I think, if you're not, even if you're not my age, if you're slightly younger or slightly older, but if you're a wrestling fan, I guarantee you will enjoy uh, these guests coming up on the Ross Report. Today's guest, I haven't had the chance to listen to this episode yet, it's MVP, of course now in Impact Wrestling. Uh, and in the following weeks, in this order, according to the website, this, these will be the guests. Lance Storm, Kurt Angle, Bubba Ray Dudley, a.k.a. Bully Ray, Sting. Yes, Steve Sting Borden. I am really looking forward to this with that light. I've really been a huge Sting fan for many, many years since the late 80s. Steve Sting Borden will be on the Ross Report. That's a huge news. AJ Styles, Sean Grande, Tony Schiavone, former WCW commentator, 
Stan Hansen, a former now retired wrestler, Stan the Man Hansen, Stan the Larry Hansen, a hero in Japan. That is another one I'm so looking forward to. He is su was such a great wrestler, such a fantastic guy. Vince Russo, Bill Watts, former uh, chairman owner, uh, ch chairman uh, manager of WCW World Championship Wrestling. That was certainly to be a uh, really, really good podcast as well. Terry Allen, aka to wrestling fans, as Magnum TA, he was an up and coming major wrestling superstar. Sadly, before his car crash, which ended his career, uh, he genuinely would have been a multiple time world champion, one of the biggest names in the industry. Although he's still a huge, he was still a re really big name in professional wrestling, he would have genuinely been one of the absolute biggest names, I believe, in the industry, uh, if it hadn't been, sadly, for that car crash. Terry Allen, a.k.a. Magnum TA, coming up uh, in several weeks on the Ross Report. And finally, one, the final one listed. This is going to be a good one as well. He is the former writing partner, well, he is, I don't know what the relationship is, I don't know, I know they don't write together, but certainly in WWE and WCW, a former writing partner of Vince Russo, the man who portrayed the character of Oklahoma, a dig, a serious dig at Jim Ross, which who uh, Jim Ross took very personally, Ed Ferrara will be on the Ross Sport, that's several weeks, again that's MVP, Lance Storm, Kurt Angle, Bully Ray, Sting, AJ Styles, Sean Grande, Tony Schiavone, Stan Hansen, Vince Russo, Bill Watts, Magnum TA and Ed Ferrara all due to appear on the Ross Report over the next many weeks. That is an amazing list of guests. So really, really great guests uh, coming up on the Ross Report, including Sting. I cannot wait for that Sting one in about five, uh, one, two, three, f f a month. In about a month, because today is his MVP, and uh, today's episode is uh, MVP. It's once uh, it's released. Ross Report is released once a week on a Wednesday again, podcast1.com and on iTunes, just search for The Ross Report, or if you can't remember it, just search for Jim Ross, and I'm sure it will certainly come up, because I've searched for it like that before. Now, WWE, a um, lot of things going on in WWE, I'm not trying to uh, rule one of this video to go too long, and I know some people get bored, and plus uh, we're right in the middle of the Football World Cup, and I have to say I'm really enjoying the Football World Cup. Some great games, just watched Australia versus Holland, uh, which just ended, absolutely fantastic uh, match-up. Uh, Holland was uh, one of is one of the teams that I have uh, as my list in for possibly winning the World Cup. I might do a uh, video on the, uh, near the end of the World Cup on what's happened during this tournament. But anyway, WWE news. Firstly, the Shield breakup. Um, watching certainly the last couple of weeks of Raw, Roman Reigns seems to have so-called won the draw to keep kind of the Shield gimmick intact. He's still wearing his vest. The music he used on Monday was a slight remix, I think, of the Shield music. Uh, Dean Ambrose also had been wearing the leather jackets and the jeans, rather like he used to on the independent scene when he was called John Moxley. Um, I think certainly careful handling of all handling of all three of the Shield guys genuinely needs to be done. They need to. The really the writers, the creative, uh, and the guys backstage, they really need to handle the the storylines of what these guys get up to with kid gloves for the rest of the year, because I I genuinely think they need to bring them, obviously they're all individual, seems uh, all individual now, uh, it seems Roman Reigns has moved away from Dean Ambrose uh, and the reverse, uh, instead of keeping the shield like a tag team, uh, it seems certainly from what I've seen uh, on TV that the shield is definitely no more, but certainly kid gloves need to be put on these guys for the rest of the year, and I think they could really boost them for the start of 2015. Now, as I said at the beginning of this, uh, really recommend RWR podcast, uh, today's episode with Lance Storm, and th the, he actually made, a well, he and Alice Radley made 
great points regarding Rusev. Uh, there's a really heavy political situation in Europe right now between Russia, the Ukraine, uh, uh, even Iraq and Iran, and you know the whole area. If there was something serious happens in the Eastern Europe area. Rusev could, could get screwed a bit, like Mohammed Hassan did if, uh, in 2007, I think it was, uh, when, he, you know, because he, he was being kind of like the terrorist guy, but then the London bombings of 7-7 happened, uh, and obviously for the sponsors and even for the networks, having a terrorist-esque uh, character like Mohammed Hassan was too much for the networks, for the sponsors was too, too much for them. WB had to take him off TV, and of course he did nothing after, and he's now left. I believe he's now an actor, last time I checked um, what he was up to. I believe he's doing some acting, I'm not entirely sure what he's up to lately. But um, certainly if that kind of thing's happened, it could kind of put the kibosh on Rusev character. Of course, he's Bul really, he is genuinely Bulgarian. Um, he's genuinely born in Bulgaria. Um, he's now, of course, the current uh, WWE residing in Russia. But if things get too out of hand, it could screw him quite a bit for WWE. If I mean, the, I, I when they were saying about this on the RWR podcast uh, that I was listening to this morning due to the time difference, um, I thought that there's one way that they could kind of rescue Rusev and and I don't know whether fans really remember this I, I, again as I said fans of a certain age may remember this but Cactus Jack Mick Foley at one point he did a storyline in WCW where he supposedly lost his memory now unfortunately due to various corporate things they had to really really quickly blow it off and end the storyline so he had to pretend that it was all, you know, I'm not sure entirely what the the actual storyline was supposed to finish to, um, but, but um, Cactus Jack had to go on at the start of a pay-per-view and admit that it was all a, a work, that it was all, you know, uh, him pretending that he lost his mind. And that thought, that got me thinking of the Cactus Jack vignettes. I'm sure there's a couple on YouTube that you can find, but uh, it's him in alleyways, and he says that he's never been a wrestler, that he's an old uh, sea captain. In fact, he calls, refers to himself as Captain Jack. It's one of the things I really, really remember from those early days of WCW, watching that uh, that company, uh, is those Captain Jack and those vignettes. Because I know America didn't get all of them. We got a lot more here in the UK on the WCW Worldwide Programme. America only got a couple of weeks of them. We got several weeks of them. We got, I think, we got almost all of the vignettes. Certainly, we did get some little more than uh, America because hearing several podcasts, hearing a few people talk about it on social media, it seemed it was very cut off in the United States. But we got more because they filmed a lot of them at the same time. So the UK got a lot of them, and it was really him and dark alleyways so with a bunch of homeless people and him saying he's Captain Jack and uh, they, they brought a, a kind of frumpy woman in to, to, to supposedly be his wife to tell him to come home that he's really Captain Jack, he's a wrestler, he's a, fa a husband, a father and that got me to thinking actually a long 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 way around to it but it got me thinking they could actually rescue the Rusev character if something does happen in the Eastern Bloc, in the Easter, East of Europe, they could always have, and, and this was an idea, kind of based on the idea that Lance Storm and Alice Radley had on our WR podcast, about having Rusev seek asylum in the United States. You know, um, kind of like the film The Terminal, where the guy ends up with no country. You know, have Rusev claim asylum in the US, and while his claim is being processed, which eventually would be granted, could have him kind of living in alleyways, dirt poor, riv living rough on the streets, you know, perhaps, you know, obviously to explain how he gets to city, f and how he, ex and maybe, maybe have it all filmed like the Captain Jack angle, but, or maybe have him steal enough money, you know, be underhand, stealing money, or, you know, kind of living rough and trying to scrape money and stuff to survive. 
enough to follow WWE from city to city, you know, just on television, obviously. Uh, and he's only got enough money to get to the next town that's got uh, Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. You know, um, you you could have Rusev um, taken in eventually by a WWE superstar, even say Xavier Woods or you know somebody, and in a Rocky esque. You know, as in the Rocky movies esque mm, style, have that WWE superstar educate Rusev, um, try to bring him and educate him to love America, to love the United States, to build him back up to a wrestler, and kind of even and I even thought of this as well. Uh, Maybe have it like the almost perhaps like the Lex Express, where Lex Luger did. I mean, it was 1993, so over 20 years ago. So a lot of younger fans who have not seen this have Alexander Rusev, after being educated to love America by a particular WWE superstar. Um, you know, obviously it would have to be a current superstar. To after that superstar built Rusev up to love America and to build him back up in his physique and wrestling ability to be a superstar once more, have him go on a Lex Express-esque tour around the United States to meet the fans, like Lex Luger did all those years, 21 years ago, uh, and really push him as kind of like a pro-American guy. I don't know. Would, would it work? It could possibly work, I think. You know, if things really go so bad in Europe, uh, in Eastern Europe, that they really kind of have to end the, the, the attitude, the current storyline of Rusev. Maybe that's a possibility. To have a WWE superstar rescue Rusev from living on the streets. Maybe Lana... Um, I don't know, maybe Lana has approached this WWE superstar, you know, to try and help Rusev and, you know... Uh, you know, when WWE said, you know, Lana's such a good looking woman, we'll keep her around, but Rusev, you're fired, and then he goes, and that's how he ends up on the streets, and I bet maybe Lana, obviously, feeling for Rusev, and obviously they're really together in real life, uh, lucky get, but, um, you know, perhaps she is the one that's able to convince that a particular WWE superstar to help Rusev, uh, um, eventually, I, I don't know, maybe it was something like that would, would turn him into a, a kind of modern day Lex Luger, Mr. USA um, uh, kind of American hero would might work, uh, maybe it work, I, I don't know whether WWE would go kind of down that route if they had to abandon this um, current Rusev storyline um, very quickly Stardust, Cody Rhodes obviously debuted uh, on Monday Night Raw I thought this is really good. Um, it's Stardust is his dad's old nickname. He's boring off his brother's gimmick a little bit with the suit, the face paint. Um, now, I've said it before. We all know, and Goldust has said it before that he this is his last run with WWE. Uh, I've got reports that he's leaving certainly by the end of the year. Although WWE may ask him to stay on, it depends on what what potential lead up. Uh, if the, t we get towards the end of the year and WrestleMania may be on, you know, starting to be think about by the WWE, what matches could they do? You know, what, how could WrestleMania 31 go? Maybe, perhaps he would stay till then. But certainly, I think this is leading to a brother versus brother feud, Cody versus Goldust. Now, also we had Cody, you know, say I'm not worthy of being your tag team partner. This could be Cody, perhaps trying to understand his brother's mindset, wearing the suit, wearing the face paint, trying to outdo him even, as again the Goldust character saying eventually to Goldust, you know, I did what you've been doing for years and I outdid you, I did it better than you could ever do, I will reach further heights in WWE than you ever have, uh, I'll stay in WWE for longer than you ever have, and uh, kind of humiliating him by doing so, um, before using all this information that, you know, this kind of research that he's done, before supposedly destroying Goldust, uh, and I said it's his last run in WWE, according to Goldust himself, perhaps this will lead to Goldust go, uh, being taken out of WWE, and um, who better 
to end Goldust's WWE career uh, than Cody. It'll give his brother a real boost to say that I took my own brother out of WWE. This is what I can do. You know, imagine what I could do to the rest of the WWE superstars, and it'll hopefully help elevate uh, Cody in the end. Uh, finally, because I'm going quite long, uh, trying to keep it about 20, most, a uh, few more, a couple of more minutes. Uh, Money in the Bank last night uh, was announced that there will be a Money in the Bank ladder match at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view on June 29th. Uh, it happens at the TD Gardens in Boston, in Boston Massachusetts. Uh, Seth Rollins announced on the main ev- on main event WWE's uh, live Tuesday night program that there will be a Money in the Bank ladder match um, for a WWE World Heavyweight Championship contract, and that he is the first entrant into that match. Uh, of course, WWE had to strip Daniel Bryan of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, uh, and so of course there'll be also another lad. Well, really, like Landstorm again, uh, taking it back to RWR podcast, but Landstorm put it, I thought, brilliantly that basically this is not going the the main event. I hope that this should definitely be the main event. Obviously, so the main event of the Money in the Bank pay per view is not really a Money in the Bank ladder match. It's just simply a ladder match. Uh, because the Money in the Bank stuff is not online, although I know some people will say, well, it's bigger than the, the Money in the Bank. Yes, it is, and I completely agree. It is more important than a Money in the Bank uh, contract because this, you know, for that you get a shot at the world title. This is for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, so certainly it's going to be the main. Uh, certainly it's going to be. Uh, it has to be the main event of the pay per view. But uh, it's going to be a great match. I'm thinking of seriously thinking about buying this pay per view. Uh, but on, on Monday night, Raw the lineup for the ladder match for the vacant WWE World Heavyweight Championship was finalised. It'll be Alberto Del Rio versus Randy Orton versus Sheamus versus Cesaro versus Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns versus John Cena. Uh, in that match, I honestly I'm not sure who would benefit more from getting the win, Bray Wyatt perhaps. I w- wouldn't like to see it going around Sheamus's waist. I don't I think the circumstances are right for Randy Orton, Alberto Del Rio. I he's just been a bit lost in the shuffle recently, so I don't think the time is right for him either. I would say maybe perhaps Bray Wyatt. I would hate to get also. It's, it's tough to say. Go and just pick somebody for the sake of having to narrow it down for to absolutely one person. I would say Bray Wyatt. Alberto Del Rio has not been there in recent months. Randy Orton. I don't want to see him with the title yet again, just because he's Triple H's buddy. Sheamus. Don't think he's right in the right position. Cesaro. It's too soon. Bray Wyatt. I think would benefit more. You know, Roman Reigns again too soon, and John Cena no, please not again. It's obvious that John Cena will surpass Ric Flair's record of 16 championship wins. I think John Cena is something like um, 14 wins, or uh, 14 World Heavyweight Championships, something like that, something really, really close. Anyway, so I think it's obvious that Cena will break Ric Flair's record and I have said that many times before but I don't want to, Cena to have, to have the title right now I don't think the time is right although Super uh, it's just been a, 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 I still I, I mean I respect John Cena the stuff he does with the kids and the charity work but I just have never liked the Super Cena character so perhaps Bray Wyatt and uh, Daniel Bryan's not really been booked right in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship reign that he has had. You know, he's not been an extremely powerful guy. Perhaps Bray Wyatt can be the guy to show, you know, I am the champion, and as the champion, I should have, and I am taking the power that I should have as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But certainly, um, it's really looking decent for the run up to SummerSlam, the run up into the summer. As I said, they need time to build people up. They need to really 
take it slow with the storylines. I know they've been thrown in the mix a little bit because of what's happened to Daniel Bryan. The plans that a lot of people believe was Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. We may yet see that match. It depends entirely on how long Daniel Bryan will be out uh, of action. Um, certainly. Uh, well, it's looking re- I don't think really I think Money in the Bank is going to be, if it's handled right, will generate a lot of interest for the WWE over the next half of 2014. Well, very quickly, because I went really, really long on this video, although I didn't mean to do to, to do it, but I'm not going to start it again, I'm just going to keep up with this. Just very, very quickly, before I end this, tomorrow I will uh, put, upload the video that I recorded earlier today. It's regarding news and information on two major Scottish wrestling events, Scottish Wrestling Entertainment's Hell for Lycra 11 and the debut event of Discovery Wrestling. I've recorded it but I've not t- edited yet and it'll take a while for editing and to sort a couple of bits out that I need to add to the video. But I'll upload them tomorrow because I'm also going to wait, wait on the announcement that they have to make tomorrow. Uh, you'll understand why when you see the video, but I want to put up the video tomorrow night, sometime late tomorrow night, uh, because more guests, more matches, and a lot of details are being made public regarding these two fantastic events. So that's a lot of um, information, a lot of stuff happening in WWE, a lot of podcast news. Really look forward to hearing a lot of these interviews. These uh, looking forward to seeing Money in the Bank. I'd actually waiting to see what's going to happen uh, in the WWE, as I said, over the latter half of 2014, and what what, what is uh, the build-up going to be to SummerSlam, WWE's second biggest pay-per-view of the year. <laughs>